Every empire breaks down. Right now we have a fully globalized system and it's in the process of breakdown where all of the previous systems did break down but they were localized. This one will not continue to actually be able to help influence the rest of the world in a positive direction. It just won't. It is in kind of a decay process. The question is whether it decays into uh, just less and less function and irrelevance or whether it decays and reboots. And in order to do that, a cultural enlightenment as a prerequisite is, is necessary. Is everyone recognizing that collective choice making has to be based on collective sense making? And are we starting to really invest not in doubling down on our own bias, but in the capacity to make sense of things well, the capacity to understand why other people are thinking the things that they do, and the capacity to communicate well so we can coordinate? How to fix collective sense making is a big, hard topic, and I absolutely can't say that myself or the groups that I work with or anyone I know has the whole thing figured out. Uh, it's why I want more people to understand both how much it affects all the other problems that you care about and how it's upstream to those and some of the factors contributing to it so that more collective intelligence starts working on various aspects of the solution. When we think of the commons, we think about some shared aspect of the world that is both a resource that we have shared access to, but also some shared stewardship of. Well, the information commons is what is the, what is the space of information out there about what is true that informs our capacity to make choices? And we can see that just like a smokestack billowing pollution into the air, most of what is being put into the information commons is pollution. If there are whole chunks of populations that you only have pejorative straw man versions of, where you can't explain why they think what they think without making them dumb or bad, you should be dubious of your own modeling. Take in the news that they're taking in for a week, right? For a day. Go to Mother Jones for a day if you're on the right. Go to Breitbart for a day. Take it in and try to seek if I'm continuously getting this and I, what are the issues that I face as a being if I really put myself in that person's shoes. And it's not just so you can empathize with the dumb people, it's that there's some actual signal that you might have been missing. Most all of the positions right now have some signal and a bunch of noise. So we wanna be able to seek to understand so we can actually get the other humans that we need to be able to coordinate with and that we can get the parts of signal we can be able to see where there's signal and noise and we can start to synthesize the signal across the space. If you feel a combination of outrage, scared, you know, emotional, and very certain with a strong kind of enemy hypothesis orientation, you have been captured by somebody's narrative warfare and you think it's your own thinking. Even if you win at a local battle, Whatever technologies you use to win, whatever social tech or infotech or whatever you use to win, the other side will reverse engineer and come back and you're just escalating an arms race. You're not moving towards real shared sense making and coordination. This doesn't mean you never take a position. It means that you take a position that is trying not to just continue warfare, but trying to elevate the whole space, which requires me understanding the whole space better. Let's say I wanna make sense of the Beirut blast or the India-China border or whatever it is. As far as narratives go, there's not one narrative. There's usually, there's usually not even two narratives. There might be five or seven or 11 different kind of narrative clusters. There might be a hundred versions, but they fall within general clusters. And so what I'll usually try to do is do a landscape of what the narrative clusters are first. And then I'll try to steel man each narrative. Like what is the strongest version of arguing that thing? that I've been able to see. So look for the best thinkers that are representative of those narratives. In addition to reading across the space, actually seek the more um, well-grounded and complex views as opposed to the more trending ones. I want to find the thinkers that seem most earnest and most well kind of educated and thoughtful across the space. And then I wanna see where people who have deep expertise and earnestness disagree. And then I wanna explore the basis of the disagreement. So basically, these are a few steps that I would encourage for people on their own to seek to understand the narrative landscape better, to seek empiricism better, to try to be able to not reject or take entire narratives, but be able to look for partial truths, to be able to try to aggregate signal across the space, 
to be way more comfortable with uncertainty. And that's uncomfortable in a way to say, I don't understand the world I live in. Even in the most consequential areas, I just don't understand it. At least that, I actually feel safer because I know that I don't have confirmation bias making me understand it wrongly. I at least have a chance to increase my understanding when I say I don't know, because the moment I think that I falsely know, now I, I'm not even going to be able to learn well. Our ability to make sense of the world is breaking down. We're making more and more consequential choices with worse and worse sense-making to inform those choices, which is kind of running increasingly fast through the woods, increasingly blind. Over the last two years, Rebel Wisdom has interviewed some of the world's top thinkers. Now we've brought them together for an eight-week online course, Sensemaking 101, with Daniel Schmachtenberger, Diane Musho Hamilton, John Viveki, Doshin Roshi, and more. Improve your sense making, develop your sovereignty, and join a wider community looking to do the same. <laughs>